we're talking about somebody that's making more progress in the sport of boxing than maybe anybody that's currently fighting in the sport right now. What's up, Barnhill family? Welcome back to the channel. Yo, yo. So, Nick, huge news in the crossover YouTube versus retired MMA star boxing world. Yep. Uh, we're going to have Jake Paul in his first fight under the Showtime banner taking on the chosen one, Tyron Woodley, mm -hmm. uh, one of the, the best 170-pound uh, UFC champions the sport's ever seen. This is a big step up for the young Paul brother. Absolutely. And, you know, love him or hate him, everybody is kind of paying attention to Jake Paul's career, where he's going from, you know, the Ben Askren fight. Everybody, you know, there was a few names that people were throwing around and, you know, he kind of called out everybody. Everybody kind of called him out. So he had many options. But uh, Tyron Woodley, at the end of the day, did seem like the right fit after that little back and forth that he had backstage with the with the glove wrapping situation uh, between him and Jake Paul's team. And the fact that he was in Ben Askren's corner, he's a friend of Ben, longtime training partner, also a wrestler, but has way better striking skills and uh, credentials than Ben Askren. So for me, this is a true major step up in, in Jake Paul's uh, 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 strength of schedule, strength of competition. And uh, for Tyron Woodley, you know, it's going to be a massive payday. And I'm very happy to see that this is uh, something that he was able to capture uh, post uh, UFC career. Yeah, Tyron said, I, I have my easiest fight and my biggest payday all wrapped up into one. And what yeah. fighter doesn't want that? I found it very interesting. You know, when Jake Paul signed with Showtime, I said, okay, he's, he's probably going to start fighting some real boxers now, guys on the lower level, local circuits that have certain records. But at the same time, I, you know, I was kind of thinking that, but also saying to myself, you know, he wants the big name. So who's, yeah. who's he really going to fight that's going to cause a... A, a media spectacle that's going to cause a big pay-per-view draw, etc. cetera. Uh, Tyron Woodley was somebody whose name he kept throwing around, but I didn't think it was serious. I thought yeah. that there's no way that Jake Paul would actually put his money where his mouth is and fight the chosen one. Yeah. And I mean, obviously we're MMA first fans. This podcast is mostly an MMA based podcast. So right. we're a bit biased and skewed towards the MMA fighters, but Tyron Woodley is a, an absolute monster. Right. He was one of the best 170 uh, welterweight fighters the UFC's ever seen. And unlike his friend and training partner, Ben Askren, has some substantial knockout power yeah. and some highlight reel knockouts. He I does. mean, he has a TKO victory over Carlos Condit. Yeah. If you're an MMA fan, you know who that is. Legend. Robbie Lawler, he knocked Robbie Lawler out. Robbie Lawler was a former UFC welterweight champion. Jake Paul is clearly very confident and he believes in his skills. Otherwise, he would not have said yes to this fight. And, you know, I, as much as I see Tyron being able to get the victory here just because he's such a great prolific champion and he's got the knockout power, as I mentioned before, and the explosive athleticism, I still do kind of have to give Jake a little bit of credit for taking on this fight. In his fourth pro fight, he's fighting a Hall of Fame knockout artist in Tyron Woodley right yeah I mean that's that's a tall order you you have to respect the you know the willingness of Jake Paul he's getting in there with a true champion a true uh martial artist everybody respects uh you know and reveres Tyron Woodley's career what he's done is is absolutely impressive and I, you know, Jake Paul, you know, he talks the talk, but apparently he's walking the walk too. So, you know, even if you're not a fan of the way he, you know, conducts himself outside of the ring and the way he's kind of cut the line, you do have to respect him. He's, he's taking on true challenges and every single step he's fighting a much more difficult fighter. I mean, the, the reason Showtime, you know, I was happy to see him sign with Showtime is because just what you said, I think feel like they were going to not really try to give him a video game or a Twitch stream or a, a, a rapper or anything like that. They were like, okay, we're going to put on real uh, boxing events. It doesn't have to be a pro boxer, but they need to be a pro athlete at right. least, you know, at least somebody who has combat thrown... sports athlete, not retired yeah. NBA player, pro athlete. <laughs> right, right. Showtime has a little bit of a reputation on the line and, and they don't want to skew that or seem like they're Triller 2.0, they're a freak show that has music, and every now and again right. there's some fight, some punches being thrown. Uh, so Tyron Woodley, 
you know, coming in, this is kind of does feel like the right step. It seems a little bit like a, a big step between Ben Askren and Tyron Woodley. Uh, but if Jake Paul is able to pull this off, I mean, we're now talking about arguably, you know, one of the fastest rising stars, not only not only uh, name recognition wise, but skill wise in the entire sport of boxing. And, you know, now that he's able to get these big name fights, these high profile fights, these pay-per-view, you know, bangers, he's, it doesn't make that much sense for him to go fight nobodies and uh, people that have the same records as him. If he can beat Tyron Woodley, I'll rest assured that he can beat all the 4-0 pros out there that are in his weight class, you know? Yeah, that's a good point because if you just ins- if you if you take out Jake Paul's name and insert any young professional boxer who's 4 and 0 right now mm-hmm. as a welterweight, I would say and they're going to be boxing Tyron Woodley. My money would be on Tyron Woodley. Listen, I right. know Tyron Woodley's 39 years old. I know he's been knocked out a couple of times at the end of his UFC career, and he's had a bit of a tough run as of late. I know he's five foot nine and Jake Paul is six foot one. But again, we're talking about somebody who has knocked out former UFC champions. Yeah. And I know I, I am alluding to the fact that I think that Tyron is going to win this fight. Um, and the reason for that is because Jake truly has to be perfect in this fight. Yeah. If Jake Paul is going to win this fight, he's going to have to fight the perfect fight because one Tyron's very hard to finish. He's only been finished by the best and it's only been in the later rounds and Jake and, and Tyron's got just crazy explosive burst strength power. And if Jake makes any mistake, Tyron will capitalize on it. And he has shown against other UFC champions that he can put the lights out on you. So I think that if Jake Paul does win this fight, although I'm not picking him to win it, I I think that we have to just go ahead and say credit to Mr. Paul because Mm -hmm. he is absolutely taking boxing as seriously as he says he is. And he's going to be going places, especially with a victory over the former champ. Yeah. Tyron, when he hits you, he hurts you. That's what... The everybody, one of his, uh, every one of his opponents from the time he was the champ, the time, the time he was a contender to the time he was, uh, on the, on the last few fights of his career knows that it's, he's a tough night out period in the story. And when he hits you, it hurts. You know, you look at his fight with Kamar Usman, obviously he lost all the rounds. Uh, you look at his fight with, um, Colby Covington, he didn't win the rounds, but those guys aren't just putting him out. You know, they're not just, you know, you know, slam dunking him and, and, and making it an easy night in the office. He is very difficult. And a lot of those guys utilized a heavy grappling game because they know just how dangerous he is with his hands. And, uh, you know, his striking is good all around, but his hands are his really his knockout uh, yep. money makers. So uh, Jake Jake's going to absolutely have his hands full. And I personally think that Tyron Woodley is the kind of guy that uh, you, you're not going to see him – take a dive like some people said Ben Askren did, which I'm light on that. I don't really think that we saw a fix, a wrestling type of fix in that situ- in that Ben Askren, Jake Paul situation. What I think we saw was a clear payday for Ben Askren that he didn't really have to do much work for. Um, you know, he, his reputation, he doesn't really care. He's funky. You know, he's a little bit different than Tyron. He's Woodley. the soccer dad with a fake hip. Right, That's right. A, Woodley's a whole different story. Woodley is a, is a, t- a real, you know, his demeanor's tough. Everything about Woodley, you know, he's got a, the chip on his shoulder that Ben Askren, you know, doesn't really ever show. And you don't really get that side of Ben Askren. Tyron Woodley knows what he can do for the MMA community. If he beats Jake Paul, knows what he can do for the boxing community. And, you know, he can really do something that will get him lifetime praise amongst all fans, even people that didn't so much like him as the UFC champion, didn't like him as a top UFC fighter. Uh, And that was mostly, you know, some of the ways he conducted himself, some of the ways he was uh, with his fighting style that rubbed people the wrong way. Uh, I feel like all of that gets erased if he knocks out Jake Paul and does it for the MMA community. Yeah, everybody with a bad taste in their mouth who's an MMA fan and doesn't like the Paul brothers will forgive everything that Tyron ever did with a victory here. Um, You know, you mentioned Kamara Usman. Kamara Usman couldn't finish Tyron. He took him all the way to the end of the fight. 
And if you look at what Camaro did in his last performance against a guy who is a bit of a mentor to Jake Paul and Jorge Masvidal, somebody who he called up on the phone at the Ben Askren press conference and they Mm -hmm. made fun of the knockout. Well, Camaro Usman flattened Masvidal in the second yeah. round, knocked him spark out. Right. So if you, you know, if, if, if you watch your mentor get knocked out like that, and then you compare that to the fact that the guy that you're fighting went all five rounds with that same guy, uh, and then you still say yes to the fight, I, you know, I, I do have to give Paul some credit here. But I, I ultimately think that, and as you mentioned, Showtime, it will be more professional. This isn't Triller. There's not going to be an hour-long concert in between fights. This is going to be a real boxing match, a real Showtime boxing main event, that Showtime boxing is one of the prestigious organizations in boxing, and this event will be run as such. It won't be Snoop Dogg's party with a fight happening in the background. So this is a big step up for Jake. This is a huge opportunity for him. I'm not going to pick him. I think Woodley is experienced enough. He's enough of a veteran. I think what he lacks in height, he makes up for in reach. The reach is much closer than the height. And I think that Jake Paul will have to be perfect in order to not get knocked out. And while I think he'll be good, I don't think he'll be perfect. Yeah, and, you know, it's hard for me to pick against Tyron Woodley in this fight. But if Jake Paul proves me wrong and beats Tyron Woodley, I'm going to have a hard time picking against Jake Paul moving forward from after this fight. You know, what What else is he going to do? Like, you know, when you're 4-0 and, and, and three of your fights are... Uh, against Twitch streamers and YouTubers and and rappers, you you start to think, okay, th- this guy's not a real fighter. He's just fighting people that are completely uh, out of their element. If he does what he did to Ben Askren, uh, to Tyron Woodley, we're talking about somebody that's making more progress in the sport of boxing than maybe anybody that's currently fighting in the sport right now. And I, while I don't really see that, I think that he has had some favorable matchups right now, and this is by far the hardest one and the least favorable for Jake Paul. Uh, my hat's off to him. He's taking on a real fighter, and if he gets this thing done, uh, he's predicting in the second round, uh, we have a real problem yeah. child on our hands. And that Conor McGregor versus Jake Paul fight looks more and more likely every day if that if he continues to win. Yeah, that's for sure, and that's I think that's his ultimate prize. And you know, by the time he's five. Six and oh, eight and oh, ten and oh, he could be fighting Floyd Mayweather. He could be fighting Connor. And Shoot his brothers fighting Floyd Mayweather at oh and one. So. Right. <laughs> essentially uh, getting to the top of the combat sports world in, in less than 10 fights. And uh, that's really something nobody else has ever done before and probably won't do ever again. That's for sure. Well, guys, love him or hate him, we're all taking notice. He's stepping in there. He's putting his money where his mouth is. He's taking on the chosen one, Tyron Woodley. Let us know in the comments. Is there any way in hell Jake Paul can win this fight? And if so, how? We always love hearing from you guys there. And as always, we appreciate a a like, comment, and subscribe. And we're on audio where you listen to podcasts. So guys, if you want the audio version of the Barnhill Brothers, check us out there too. Have a great day. Peace.